made from the cheapest, most abundant substance on earth. It's sterile, cheap, doesn't contaminate its contents, and it's almost 100% recyclable. It's the glass bottle. Glass dates back to 1500 BC, but it's still a bit of a mystery substance. The encyclopedia calls it an inorganic product of fusion cooled to a rigid condition without crystallization. Michael Faraday characterized it as a solution of different substances. And a ceramics engineer I know calls it a supercooled liquid. And no one has got the explanation for why we can see through it. When glass is made from scratch, the biggest ingredient is sand. At this plant, the biggest ingredient is glass, and only glass. These guys are looking for stuff that will interfere with the rest of the separation process. A magnet at the end of the conveyor catches anything that a magnet will catch, mostly bottle caps. Aluminum caps escape the magnet, but their fate awaits. The next step is a cleverly designed crusher that pulverizes the glass, but flattens other impurities. Next, the sieve. This machine shakes the mix over a grate. The crushed glass falls through, and the flattened stuff gets directed into a bin. Bye-bye. The cleaned, crushed glass is called cullet. It's inspected. If it doesn't pass, the next step is the first step. It goes through the process again. Brand new, clean materials meet up with the cullet here. These big pots are actually scales. Each one's connected to its own balance beam. The fellow that showed us around pointed out that this is much like baking a cake. Measure the ingredients carefully, then throw in the oven. It's a mighty big cake. Tons are mixed at one time. Because of the batch size, the whole process is automated. Measured ingredients are conveyored up to the top floor and mixed in a three-story bowl. Large buckets on tracks move into position underneath the mixer. A magnet at the bottom of the mixer catches any pesky little pieces of metal that have made it this far. Container glass is made from 73% pure sand, 13% soda ash, 10% limestone, and an assortment of minor ingredients to control its melting characteristics and color. Recycled cullet can be added in large quantities. The train buckets pour the mixture into hoppers that feed the furnaces. Still like making a cake. Mix carefully and bake at 2800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's real hot, Celsius. The furnaces are monsters. Gas burners at one end fire across the mixture and air fans on the other side suck the flow towards them. Every 15 minutes the flow of flame is reversed across the furnace to keep the heat even. A glimpse inside the furnace, a glimpse doesn't really do it justice, reminds you of where your mom told you to go if you were bad. At the front end, the powdered mixture is visible as it enters. Further along, the mix is mostly molten, with a few lumps. By the time it exits down a chute, the glass is one homogeneous liquid. The flow out of the furnace is carefully controlled and chopped off in precise amounts. These precisely controlled amounts are called gobs. The gobs drop into chutes and are directed into a two-stage mold. 
Molding bottles is a bit like blowing bubble gum. The first stage is poking your tongue into it to make a space for the air that you're gonna blow. The two molds look like this. The finished bottle assumes the shape of the inside of the second mold. The top where the cap fits is crimped into shape. An important part of operating the molding machine is swabbing. An oily substance is applied to the molds to prevent the bottles from sticking. Now it's another furnace. The bottles have to be cooled at a controlled rate so they'll be strong but not brittle. The one on the end is being weighed. With a combination of human and automated inspection, the bottles are checked for impurities, thickness, and shape. This machine is making sure that the caps will seal properly. About 10% of the bottles go back to the mixture for another try at the process. This particular plant produces 700 tons of glass bottles a day. From here, they go on to various companies that fill them with everything from baby food to beer. Then it's on to the consumer and back to the plant.